Hello guys, Faye here. I'm here to show you a one by one design I recently used on the Arcpocalypse server, which was rated by none other than Yosimer. <laughs> Great Arc YouTuber. Recommend you check out his content. But after conversing in the comment section, I had someone ask how I made it. And it's kind of hard to explain over YouTube replies, so I'm going to show you how to do it. These are the materials you're going to need, although not in these quantities, these are random numbers. You are likely going to need the most mortar and pestles, though. You want to start off with a thatch foundation. This is where your actual one by one is going to go. You're going to want a wooden pillar off to the side, lower snap point, and then one in the center, lowest snap point. Off to the side of that, you want another thatch foundation with a pillar in the middle, lowest snap point. You can delete these first two pillars. Below your first thatch foundation, you're going to lower a stone foundation underneath, and you can delete this, and you can carry that higher snap point for thatch foundation over. This will be our placeholder section. This will be where the actual one by one goes. Next up, you're going to check which way the anvil orientates on the smithy. You're going to want the anvil where your um, preserving bin is going to go. So, that means we're going to need our preserving bin to face this direction. Use K mode to align everything. I would recommend using a ladder here but this placement doesn't have to be perfect, so you can get by without it. Crouching and just tapping keys can help you get it as close as you can. Move the walls, and check to make sure that you can replace the walls. Perfect. Now you're going to need a ladder for this step. You're going to try and we're going to try and place our smithy inside of that preserving bin. Which to do that, we're going to use bear traps. Keep your screen aligned. Try not to move it during this step. And in this step, is finicky and annoying as hell. Bear trap does strange things to hit boxes, and you can sometimes glitch structures inside of each other. I like that. I'm going to push it back. You're going to try and place two. You can place more if you can, but I doubt it. Two is often a problem. You can access the different inventories. Come on. These two are particularly close together. There we go. One, zero. It's finicky, but if you're going to live in a one by one and you want maximum storage, you need to do that. Preserving bin, you can still access. Make sure that you can still place walls around the whole thing. We're good. Now we're going to place down our beds. Place these next to the smithy. You can, of course, place as many as you want. And if you want to name each one of them, you can take a tiny step back after placing each one, but it doesn't bother me. Next up, we're going to place our next foundation, which we don't want on the top snap point or the lowest we want it right there. Adds one more layer on there. This is going to be three foundations thick. Our next step is also kind of tricky, but this one is down to personal uh, patience. This can be as long or as short as you really want it to be. This is placing mortar and pestles. I'd recommend having a lot of extra mortar and pestles beyond what you want to use, so that way you can restart this several times if you need to. Trying to make as many clumps of these as you can. I stacked up four there. And same with the smithies. You, it's a little bit tricky to access them, but if you just go slow, you can access each one. Align yourself with the ladder each time you want to try a new set. Often, I can only get three in a row. Sometimes you can get more, sometimes you get up to, I believe 20 was my record down below on the lower level of one of these. You could space them like normal mortar and pestles without using the bear trap, but this is more space efficient. That right there is 10 mortar and pestles. The next part, you're going to want to orientate them sideways. And this one you don't really need a ladder for. Just try and keep it fairly straight. And 
and if you're only getting strings of two or three, you can totally reset because sometimes you get really long strings of mortar and pestles to work. Other times you can't. It's a glitch, I guess. So don't expect it to work every time. And for now, we're just going to place down that one. You can also substitute some out in this corner for a campfire. And that way you can cook meat inside, but I don't normally because you can cook it outside. It saves you more space this way. Step back, place this over the top. Now we're going to need our standing torches. It's important that you place these before the walls because their hitboxes are oriented or have to be placed far enough away from the walls to actually be placed. They only have eight slots each and can only hoard, hold a few things, but where mortar and pestles won't fit, these things can be extremely useful. This might take you a few tries, but they're cheap. Picking up bear traps can be done, so you don't have to worry about demolishing that each time. These are another thing like the mortar and pestles where you can place as many as you want, realistically, if you're willing to retry a few times. Usually I can get about four per side without driving myself crazy. I could reset that side and try and get more, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Next up we want a fence foundation on the front. And we no longer need these thatch. This thatch. So, so far you've got two smithies. This particular design has 10, 15 mortar and pestles in it, six standing torches, one preserving bin, three beds. Now you're going to want to place a stone doorway on the outside by stepping back and looking up. And you're going to want a metal doorway on the inside. This so it doesn't advertise that you have a valuable base, but still affords you some degree of protection if people try grenade raiding. That's my bad. I'm going to replace that because I made a mistake. Grenade raiders will almost always go for doorways because it's cheaper, obviously, with grenades. Destroy the wood defense foundation. And so therefore the doorways are, are the weakest points. So this will serve you early game and maybe even late game if you're willing to risk someone finding it. Mine was found after about five days in the Arcpocalypse server due to monkeys being inside of it, which are great for storage, but do give it away if people know what to look for. And actually I had two monkeys glitch through the wall after I put them on top of the preserve. So be careful. You can't wall you can't layer these walls any thicker without doing outside layers. So this is the rest of the base. The smoke from this preserving bin, since it's lowered in the ground, doesn't come out the top usually. It does come out the sides a little bit, but it's less noticeable. I would advise backing this into a corner around some rocks. You can double wall the ceiling. see this. Inside I will usually place two mortar and pestles or maybe even three in positions roughly like this. Make sure you can still access the lower ones with the ones on top. I usually use the top ones for crafting because they're most accessible and the bottom ones for storage. Everything in here is kind of finicky to get to but Another thing is, if people are unattentive, they won't notice some, maybe even all, of your lower mortar and pestles. Standing torches can hold wood, thatch, and spark powder. I usually use them for spark powder while making gunpowder. Preserving bin, two smithies. Kind of annoying to access the different ones, but there you go. Number one. And if I can get it, number two is in here somewhere. You can place these farther apart than I did just so you can get to these. There you go. I'm actually thinking about uh, sharing some more of my base designs because I really enjoy making bases. I feel like I'm fairly good.
Goodbye.